Ladies and gentlemen, good day to you and welcome to the Microsoft Word tutorial. Microsoft Word is going to be the application that you use most often in school and it's important that you know the features of Microsoft Word in order for you to be successful. Um, and Microsoft Word is always changing. Uh, we're going to be working with the 2016 version of it. And this is the screen you are likely to see when you first log on to Microsoft Word. It gives you all of these what we call templates or examples of different ways in which you can use Microsoft Word. Um, for our purposes, we are going to start using a single spaced blank document. Um, in most cases, you're either going to use the blank document or the single spaced blank document. I'm going to use a single spaced blank document to show you some examples of what we can do with Microsoft Word. So, this is what you will see when you create a blank document. You will notice that the cursor is blinking on the left and that you have blankness. Um, some things you need to see are what font you are using. This is using the Calibri font for the body of text and it is using size 11. Um, it is not bold, it is not italicized, and it is not underlined. It's also not strike through. And um, this is something we can use to do subscript, which is typing very small letters below the line of text. And this is something we use to do superscript to typing very small letters just above the line of text. I'm going to start off by putting a heading here. I am Mr. Blumendahl. This is computer literacy class. And today's date just happens to be September. I'm not typing very well, am I? Uh, 19th, 2016. Um, I do not want that to be on the left. We always put our headings on the far right. So I'm going to, I press the left uh, cursor button. I've highlighted my text. I'm going to go here. Uh, this is what we do if we want all the lettering to start on the left side of the page. This is what we do if we want it to be centered. So I'll click that just for the purpose of argument. It is now centered. And this is what we do if we want it to be on the right. In this case, I want everything to be aligned on the right. Uh, and this is what we do if we want things to be justified, which means that there will be a right edge and a left edge. Um, usually we don't use justify very often, but um, it is there. Now, in my case, I think those letters look very, very small. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to blow that up to a 14 size font. And you'll notice with every one I put, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. That's entirely too large. 14 is usually in a very appropriate heading um, size. So now I'm going to go ahead and click the return button. And I'm going to go back to left. You always want to default to the left side unless there's a specific reason you're doing something else. So I'm going to press the cursor one more time, and now I need a title. So I'm going to call this the first assignment. And usually titles are nice when they're underlined. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this, and I'm going to press underline. Voila. And in this case, I think I want it centered. So I press the center button, and there we go. Now I'm going to press return again, and I'm going to go ahead and click left, and I'm going to press one more time. So now everything is going to start on the left side. I don't want it underlined, so I need to make sure that I unclick underline, and I'm now going to shrink my text to size 12. When we're starting paragraphs, we always want to indent by about six spaces. So I'm going to count off six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I am now typing my first sentence. It is very exciting. 
to be doing my first assignment for computer literacy class. Notice how I capitalized computer literacy because it is the official title of a class. Um, and what I wanted to do here was um, get beyond the first line because now that I have this much text, there's something called line spacing. Also, if you right click on what you highlight, you will get all of these neat options here. Um, and those options are pretty important. Right now, I want to do some line spacing. Um, these lines to me are too close together, so I'm going to come up here. This is my line and paragraph spacing area. I'm going to click on this, and I would like my spacing to be 1.5. So notice how the further I come down, the more space there is between those lines. Now this is getting a little ridiculous. I think 1.5 is just about right. And for your first assignment, that's what I would like you to do. So that's line spacing. Um, there's also something called indenting. So let's go ahead and say this assignment has many requirements. I'm going to hit the return button. I'm about to list those requirements. So I'm going to go ahead and press this button, which is going to increase my indent. So watch this. Boom. It's moved the cursor all the way over to there. And I would like some bullets here. I could do bullets. I could do numbers. And I could do a multi-level list. I'm going to start with bullets. The first thing is, in this assignment, a proper heading. Second thing is proper spelling and punctuation. Third thing is going to be 1.5 line spacing. And for now, we'll, we'll leave it at that. If I did not want these to be bullet points, I could highlight all of them, come up here, and change it to numbering. So if I click on this, as if by magic, it's gone to 1, 2, and 3. Uh, if I want to indent it some more, I press this, and it would keep moving it over. If I want to reverse indent it, I would click the decrease, and it would move it over like that. Um, some other things I could do, press justify, it actually doesn't do anything. We're back to being uh, aligned on the left here. If I wanted to change the font of everything here, I could highlight that. Notice here it shows that there's no text, but it has a little gray box there, meaning that these lines are set to be aligned to the left. Um, and for my opinion, that's a good idea um, to default to the left side if you don't have a specific reason not to. I happen to be a fan of um, Cambria, so I'm going to change everything to Cambria. So I've now changed the whole assignment to Cambria. And because Cambria looks a little bit smaller, I'm going to make my actual um, line spacing. I'm going to change it to 13. 13 is not an option they give you. But you could go up here, highlight the field, and enter 13 manually, press return, and as if by magic, uh, it blows up and it becomes 13. Uh, for the purposes of our first assignment, this more or less shows you the skills that you need uh, to be successful. Uh, there are other things you can do with Microsoft Word that we will be doing down the road, um, but this shows you what you need to do for the basic use of Microsoft Word um, that I'm requiring you to do today. And just to go over that assignment, it happens to be right here. Um, this is our first computer literacy assignment. You're going to be writing a letter of introduction. So you're going to be using Microsoft Word 2016, which is why we're in the computer lab. And you're going to tell me a lot of things about yourself. Um, and the reason I'm having you do this is to practice Microsoft Word, but it's also going to help me know something about you as a student and why you're taking this class. So there are four things I want you to focus on when you are doing this assignment. And the first one is that you choose a consistent readable font. And I don't want the font to be Arial. Um, and I don't want it to be the default font it gives you either, which is Calibri. I want you to choose a different font. And I want it to be one I can read. There's lots of 
uh, super fancy cursive fonts and things like that. I want, I want it to be a readable font, something that's not going to be painful for me to read. Uh, I do want you to focus on spelling, capitalization, and punctu punctuation. It just so happens that Microsoft Word um, shows you when you have spelling mistakes or punctuation mistakes. For instance, it has got that blue line there under 1.5 line because it's not quite sure what I'm doing with that. So it wants me to take a look at that and make sure. Uh, are you sure you want that there, bud? And it just so happens that I do. But if it were misspelled, like if I were to do this, I'll put a D here. C. It doesn't recognize the word L-I-N-D-E because there is no such word, so that's pointing out to me because it's got that un red underlined squiggle that that is misspelled. So I'm going to delete that, and as if by magic, it is spelled correctly again. Um, and I want you to practice proper formatting. I've just shown you some very key formatting tools using Microsoft Word. I would like you to use them. Um, for example, one I did not show you is putting things in bold. I've got my title here in bold. I could come up here and I could unbold it like that by clicking on the B. I could rebold it. If I wanted to make it italicized, I could click on the I. And as if by magic, now it's in italics. Um, these, these are good skills to know. All right. Uh, in your, I want your heading to be justified to the right. So you're going to be going, putting your heading in and you're going to click on this right here. This is your aligning right. Um, if I centered it, it would be there. That does not look particularly good. I'm aligning it to the right. Then I want you to write um, five paragraphs. Paragraph one, I'd like you to tell me about yourself, your hobbies, your after-school activities, and your interests. And I want complete sentences with a six-space indent at the beginning. Paragraph two, I would like you to tell me about your computer access and use at home. What do you use for your computer needs at home? Do you have a Mac? Do you have a PC? Which is pretty much anything that's not a Mac. Do you have both? And how good would you say you are at using your computer? In paragraph three, I would like you to tell me how you use your computers at home. And please be detailed. What is it that you use your computer to do at home? Do you only play games? Um, do you surf the internet a lot? Uh, what is the specific use of your computer that you have in your life? Paragraph four, I'd like you to tell me about, about other technologies that you use regularly in your daily life. So I've listed some game systems there. I know a lot of you have your own personal smartphones. Um, I'm not going to state my opinion about that. Um, and what do you use those for? Do you have an iPad? Do you have some other kind of tablet? Do you have a form of technology that I have not listed here uh, that is important to you in your life? And then I'd also like you to write me a paragraph about what you're hoping to get out of my class this semester. That would be good for me to know. And then you will put sincerely at the bottom on the left side. You'll justify that to the left and you will type your name. Please, please, please check your spelling, capitalization, and punctuation. Don't be sloppy. You spell out words. This is not a text message conversation. This is uh, academic language I would like you to use. And I want you to do your best work. And then when you are done, um, you're going to give me your assignment on the official drive, which you should be able to find. Um, it would be student work. We have to find that folder. Students profiles. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There is a student work turn in folder, or I'll have you submit it to me on Google Classroom. I'm going to have to figure that out before I actually get to class. So we'll, we'll save that for when I'm actually physically in the room and talking to you. For now, this is the end of our lesson on how to use the basics of Microsoft Word. We'll get into more detail later in the week. This is Mr. Blumendahl. Signing off.